Chemistry lecture number 17, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Dalton's atomic theory states that atoms are indestructible. This is not quite correct. Atoms can be broken into electrons, protons, and neutrons. Now, electrons were discovered with a device called a cathode ray tube. Now, this is a tube filled with gas, and inside the tube at each end are metal plates. The metal plates are attached to a battery or voltage source. And when you turn on the voltage, a beam appears between the plates. And the beam is called a cathode ray. So here's our glass tube, and at the end of it are these two little metal plates. And at the end of the plates, you attach a... Uh, a battery, and when you turn it on, uh, a beam appears. And there's a better illustration probably in your textbook. Here's one from uh, one textbook. So, you see the glass tube, all right, attached to a battery, and the little green beam in the middle? That's the uh, cathode ray. What's interesting about the cathode ray is that if you hold a magnet near the beam, the beam will bend. All right. So if you hold a magnet close to the beam instead of just going straight across, see this one's bending downward. And I can show you another picture of an actual cathode ray bending. There we go. So let me see if I can get it right there. Okay. So here's a magnet being held near the uh, cathode ray tube. And see the little green beam? It's not going straight across. It's bending downward like that. So a magnetic field influences uh, the, uh, the beam. So the fact that a cathode ray is deflected by a magnet indicates that it's composed of charged particles. <clears throat> so it's thought that in the same way that uh, a magnet can influence the movement of uh, ball bearings, um, it must mean that the cathode rays are also made of particles like the ball bearings. So if a magnet influences the movement of something, then that object that's uh, moving must be a uh, solid particle. All right, so. By the end of the 1800s, it was known that these uh, particles had a negative charge. A physicist J.J. Thompson performed experiments and determined that the cathode ray particle was not as heavy as the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen is the smallest atom, thus the cathode ray particle is not an atom, but another type of particle smaller than the atom. And this is how the electron was discovered. Thompson measured something called the charge to mass ratio of the electron. And another scientist by the name of Robert Milken performed another experiment uh, called the oil drop experiment and used uh, Thompson's charge to mass ratio to determine the mass of the electron. And the point of all this is that uh, Milken and Thompson, uh, they determined that the mass of the electron is found to be very small compared to the atom. And discovery of the proton was based on experiments involving hydrogen. Now, at the time, it was believed that hydrogen could be the building block of all atoms. Now, hydrogen's the lightest atom, so scientists speculated that other atoms could be made by fusing hydrogen atoms together to make bigger and bigger atoms. Ernst Rutherford conducted uh, an experiment that produced hydrogen where none existed. And he combined two elements, helium, also called an alpha particle, and nitrogen, and ended up with oxygen and hydrogen. So the alpha particle came from radioactive polonium. So he had a container that was filled with nitrogen, and then he just put this uh, radioactive polonium, which is a metal, um, with um, the nitrogen. So the polonium would spit out these alpha particles, and then they'd wait a little bit, and then they'd check the container, and then they would suddenly find hydrogen and uh, hydrogen and oxygen where um, it hadn't been before. Hey, where's this oxygen and hydrogen coming from? All we did was throw a lump of polonium in with some nitrogen gas, and now suddenly we're getting hydrogen and uh, oxygen. Well, the alpha particle and the nitrogen atom, they combined, and then they ejected the hydrogen atom. <clears throat> So the hydrogen atom was originally inside the nitrogen atom. So basically what happened was uh, you had an alpha particle, and then you had the uh, nitrogen atom. And so uh, alpha particle was being spat out of polonium atoms. So this collided with that. And for a brief moment, 
they were combined, and then later it would spit out a hydrogen, and then what you would end up with is an oxygen atom and a hydrogen. All right. The ejected hydrogen atom was different from a regular neutral hydrogen atom. It had a positive charge. So this hydrogen that was being spat out of the uh, combined uh, alpha nitrogen uh, entity uh, it had a positive charge. So it wasn't a regular uh, hydrogen atom. Now Rutherford named this special hydrogen atom that had a positive charge the proton. Now there's a problem. If atoms were made of only protons, there was a discrepancy between the actual mass of an atom and the predicted mass. So they were able to measure the mass of atoms and they were able to figure out how many protons were in it, but then and they also knew the mass of the proton, but when they added everything all up together, um, they were short. Um, the atom was too heavy. Um, they say, hey, you know, we've got seven protons in here, but uh, it seems as though we have 14 protons in here. What, what the heck's going on? So protons could not account for the entire mass of an atom. Now Rutherford suggested that atoms also contain neutral particles that also contributed to the mass of the atom. So the nitrogen atom that had seven protons but weighed as though it had 14 protons, there must be other particles in there um, adding up to the mass of the uh, nitrogen atom. Now, a scientist by the name of Walter Both uh, found evidence that neutrons existed, but he thought he f the neutrons were something else. Here's the experiment he did. So he exposed these very light metals, uh, beryllium, boron, and lithium, to alpha particles. So once again, I guess he held radioactive polonium next to the, uh, these light metals, and the alpha particles would slam into the uh, light metal. And when he did that, um, the light metal seemed to be releasing some type of radiation. See, so the alpha particle slammed into the metal, and then after that, the metal started giving off some type of energy. And it was a very strong energy, and, and originally they thought it were gamma rays, which they knew about. Um, gamma rays, well, I'm not sure where, I think they said the gamma rays may have come from radioactive uh, uranium. But anyway, they knew about gamma rays, high uh, energy. But uh, they didn't know what this uh, new type of energy was. They thought they were gamma rays. Now, James Chadwick, he redid or replicated Both's experiment, and then he exposed these new uh, energies or radiations to paraffin wax. Paraffin wax, they knew, had a lot of uh, hydrogen in it. And when they exposed the uh, paraffin wax to this new radiation, the wax started spitting out pot uh, protons. Now, by measuring the speed of the emitted protons, Chadwick determined that the protons were not being hit by some new mysterious type of energy, but by neutral particles of almost the same mass. And thus, Chadwick proved the existence of neutrons. So, like Both before him, alpha particles were exposed to the metal. Metal gave off not mysterious energy, but neutrons. The neutrons hit the wax and the wax gave off the protons. And so they measured the uh, speed of the protons being given off, and by doing that, uh, Chadwick was able to determine, hey, this is an energy being given off here. They're actually neutrons. In summary, atoms are composed of electrons, protons, and neutrons. So they found the electron, and then they figured out that it had a negative charge, and it was very, very small. One 1,837th the mass of a proton. Um, there's the proton, and they had a positive charge, and they knew it was large. And then, finally, they uh, discovered the neutron, which had no charge, and uh, it was large. And uh, the mass was determined to be slightly larger than that of the proton. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture Number 17, Electrons, Protons, and Neutrons.